Welcome back everyone to another review. This time around I figured I would go ahead and actually do a review of the Mark II Titans. Because the uh, last video was more of a story about why I, uh, <laughs> why I have two of these in the background. But anyways, um, this is going to be an actual review of the kit itself. So this is the High Grade Universal Century Gundam Mark II Titans version. Um, the Titans version is the one that is like the blue or black color. Because uh, sometimes it looks black and sometimes it looks blue. It's technically supposed to be blue. Like a dark navy blue. But sometimes in the show it looks black. This is a 2015 kit. So it's not too old. But it's not super new either. Um, and this comes from the show Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. So if you're wondering what show it comes from or whatever, what part of the franchise it comes from, there you go. And this was done by Red Bandai, so that means that you would see the price tag right here, but uh, where I got this kit from, they put a sticker over that. So you can't really see it, but it says 1500 yen, but you might barely be able to see that. Anyways, but this is an older kit, so it doesn't have any uh, translations for the uh, kanji. And, um, you know, if you can translate that for yourself, you can go ahead and pause it now and translate this blurb telling you about the, the suit. Here's some more information about the suit, like how high it is and stuff like that. And finally we got, there we go, some more about the suit, some different pictures of it, and different action poses that you can do. And some gimmicks, and of course, its accessories. Well, now we're done looking at the box. You know, you're probably wondering, uh, go ahead and go and do the kit. Well, I'm not actually done with the box yet. One of the things I find interesting about the box art here is that the background of the box art is actually the Arguma with a Hyzak here. And another Titan Mark II here. This is, I find, pretty funny. Because this is number three, which I believe is supposed to be, um... Shoot. It's supposed to be Jared's. And this right here is supposed to be Emma doing that surrender scene from, uh, the show. But she didn't surrender with a mark two she surrendered with a hyzak so they kind of got this max uh messed up in the uh picture here but it is just a background picture so it's not that important but i do find that to be pretty funny all right anyways moving on to the kit all right so here's the kit itself now as you can tell that uh you know you probably could tell from the other kit as well but for a high grade, there actually is a pretty good amount of surface detailing, um, which is a lot for a uh, high grade. One of my favorite bits of detailing on this particular kit is on the backpack where the um, beam sabers are held in. You can actually see these little detailed little like hose pieces. They're really small, but they have a lot of texture on them. You probably won't be able to see it in the video, but they're really small. They, they look really good. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite things about this kit. Um, but overall, the detailing is actually pretty good for a high grade, especially from 2015. Um, there's a lot of places that you could touch up by adding paint and detailing it yourself. Um, but that's if you want to go that far. I hardly ever do. Because I don't really see a point in it. I find 
most more of the enjoyment from these things to be from the actual building process and collecting them. Uh, but other people, of course, you know, they care more about putting as much detail into one model as they can. It's all up to you. But there's one thing I want to go ahead and go over now, which is the accessories. Now, he actually has quite a bit more than you think, um, besides what you see on the kit. So, what I have on the kit right now uh, is pretty standard. Is obviously his uh, beam rifle, which is right here. His shield and his two beam sabers. But he has a few more. Um, and that would be these. So, um, what's here is a few extra pieces. Now, this is his, uh, obviously this is his Hyper Bazooka. Bazookas and launchers and stuff are pretty bare bones when it comes to like high grade versions of them. They hardly ever have any kind of unique action, but you can uh, move the handle on this one, which is, you know, pretty cool. Um, I don't particularly care for the launchers and stuff, but that's just me. I, I just prefer rifles. Um, he does have this little piece right here. Now, at first, I thought this would be to connect it to a uh, like an action base or something, but it's actually not for an action base. It's for the it's for the shield because it actually has two options you can have for hooking it to the arm. I don't know what the point is for two different versions i think one version is for the fact that it can uh kind of like move and this one's completely stationary i'm guessing that's what it is uh but i couldn't tell you and then this right here is because the actual mark ii is pretty underpowered in the show compared to a lot of the other suits so, technically, the Mark II doesn't have any Vulcans like a lot of the other Gundams do. But, this right here adds uh, a Vulcan to it, basically. So, that's what that is. It goes around the head, and it's put, it, it just clips onto the head, and you can have Vulcans because of this right here, this little headpiece. Um, I don't personally care for it, which is why I don't have it on the head. Um, but that's just, you know, that's just me. If you want to see what it looks like with it on there, you can just look at that picture on the box and that's how it looks. You know, you might like that in particularly, uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but that's just, you know, that's personal preference. It's up to you. And, you know, obviously it has, a. Uh, two beam saber effect parts and uh, these are actually pretty long for a high grade well actually no, not really they're about the they're about the good, uh, right size for a high grade and that's the weird thing bandai is so strange when it comes to their uh their beam saber effect parts because sometimes they will have really long ones that look like they should be for master grades in high grade boxes. And then sometimes they give you really short ones that look like they should be for an SD Gundam or something in a high grade box. And sometimes they don't have any at all. Which would make sense if the suit doesn't have a beam saber. But what makes it worse is that in recent years they've been having high grades that do have beam sabers not have any beam saber effect parts and i find that is just really like just incredibly lazy uh, i know why they do it to try and keep the costs down but honestly that kind of sucks because yeah if you're a big you know collector like i am you will have an abundance of those beam sabers probably because you don't use that many of them but unfortunately if it was someone's first kit and they happened to grab one that didn't have any beam saber effect parts, 
they wouldn't even know that some of the kits come with those until they got one. So honestly, I don't really think that that's, that's not a good idea, Bandai. I really wish you wouldn't do that. Um, the only other thing to add to the accessories is that with the launcher, you can put it in his hand, of course, but you can also undo this little flap back here in the back and put the launcher on there to uh, store it. But personally, I find that it doesn't really work that well, personally. Especially once he's like, it, like if it's in there, it's okay. But putting it in there is kind of a chore. It's not too bad, but it could be easier. Um, that's really about it. When it comes to the kit itself and articulation, it's about as standard as you can get. Um, this particular one is actually still pretty stiff. So he's got a lot of play in him still. I can move him around a lot and he won't like move. But that one up there <laughs> uh, doesn't do that. It definitely has a lot. It's really loose. And I think that's just because I've moved him around a lot. And he's been mostly on the shelf in one pose since I got him like two or three years ago. So, yeah. He is one of my older kits, obviously. Uh, I ended up getting him to replace the one up there because of my incident. <laughs> and um, that's what he was for. He was to be replaced. And uh, I thought maybe I should just go ahead and get one more and make it number three. But then I was like, well, no, because I'd have to get another one to replace Unit 2. Because obviously Unit 2 had an issue. <laughs> so I didn't do that. But anyways... This is the, you know, best, this is what I had to do, this was this was my option. But uh, as you can tell, this was a pretty rec a pretty old kit of mine. There's a lot of uh, marks all over the body. Now, that's something that you're going to have to deal with when it comes to um, darker kits like this. They just, they mark a lot easier, and kits that have a lot more bright colors or lighter colors it's harder to see them but when it comes to darker kits darker plastic is just it really shows the nub marks and it sucks but that's just how it is so you're gonna have to deal with that a little bit uh i should have cleaned it up more but at the time i didn't care about cleaning up my kits i mean i do now but I didn't worry about it back then. I didn't, even under, I didn't even understand what cleanup was. So he's still in that state where he hasn't been touched up. But the reason why I didn't do anything is because I wanted to basically show the, my growth as a builder. And this was one of my earlier kits. So he's definitely a little bit worse for wear when it comes to how he looks with all the nub marks and stuff on him but that's more of my fault of course than the kit um he does have a little bit of decals as you can tell he's got a uh, number one on his shoulder right there and i think he's got a few more but i didn't put all of them on him. and uh that's about it really honestly and the quality is really good like he, he's a sturdy kit it takes a lot to make him fall apart well, except for the waist. The waist comes off pretty easily. But that's about it. Um, when it comes to this kit... Hmm. My rating and recommendation for this kit. Well, let's see. Hmm. I would rate him... Hmm. Slightly above average. I'd say 6 out of 10. And the only reason why I give him a slightly above average rating for a high grade is because, well, the amount of extra accessories he has for optional posing is pretty nice. And even though it doesn't really change a whole lot, I do think that his detailing and how rugged he is when you first get him is good but i have that one up there to tell me and show me that a lot of usage will loosen him up very quickly 
And that can be a problem for someone who starts off with this guy and will, you know, move him around a lot because over time he will loosen up. There are methods to stiffen up the joints again, um, but this one in particular does loosen up pretty quickly if you use them a lot and move them around quickly and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind that he will loosen with too much movement. But you do have a decent amount of accessories and different ways to pose them. So if that's something that you're into, that helps. Uh, I do recommend him because, one, he's just one of the coolest looking Gundams, I think. Uh, that's a basic standard looking one. Uh, I know some people aren't huge fans of the basic, like, standard looking suits because they're really, like, well, basic. <laughs> Uh, but that's, you know, everyone, everyone has their preferences. I prefer the more standard looking suits because they look more realistic, like they could actually exist. The ones that are more extravagant might look really cool, but they don't look like they could actually exist, which is one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, he's a good-looking kit. He's pretty basic. He doesn't stand out too much. But one thing that you should get him for is the fact that he's one of the major players in the Zeta Gundam series. And because of that, he should have a place on your shelf somewhere. You don't have to necessarily get the Titans version if you don't want to. You can get the AU version, which is the same thing. It's just white instead of uh, blue. But, you know, that's up to you. And uh, that's the rest of that's the end of this video. So, uh, like and subscribe. Please hit that notification bell. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.